BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 184, Female Ejaculation. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are going to talk about what women should know about their sexual health. While neither of us are primarily specialists in human sexuality, being a gynecologist and being a therapist and talking to people uh, about all the things that we talk to people about. For 30 about, years, we've, we've, we've heard, gotten a lot of information. We've heard a lot and we've educated ourselves and learned a lot. And um, we frequently get questions from people about things that happen to them that they don't understand or things that don't happen that they don't understand. And they're like, well, why is this happening and what can we do about it? And one of the questions that's recently come in is a question from a female uh, who who watches our podcast and, and has done some reading because she's looking for an answer to a particular problem. And the problem is that she experienced a form of ejaculation when she was having sex, and she'd never experienced that before, and she was frightened uh, and upset. Uh, and so we talked about it and decided even though it's a delicate topic, it's one that we want to try to address because there are men and women out there who don't know that women sometimes uh, expel fluids when they have an orgasm. They ejaculate in the same uh, visual way that men do. And that's, if you if you don't know that and that happens to you, it's kind of frightening. Yeah, the pa- patients are really afraid of this. And if you go on the internet, there's tons of misinformation about it. Mm-hmm. So we went and did some more research on on real medical studies and that has helped us with actually answering these questions yet i've had to answer these questions over the years on and off and have um, done research to find an answer for my patients well a lot of it is in dr beverly whipple's book on right. orgasm that's right she has a lot of information there that is is well researched and she has labs where women's orgasms are studied and mm-hmm. ejaculation is studied. Kind so. of like the old Masters and Johnson thing in St. Louis. Right, right. So, And she did that with um, University in New Jersey. Is it, is it Rush? I don't know. Rush? I, I forgot. Um, in any case, Beverly Whipple's the one of the um, pioneers in this subject. But the first issue and what we're describing is there, there are two types of vaginal ejaculation. There's one type that is a uh, clear fluid that comes out from two tiny little glands on either side of the urethra. So the urethra is where we urinate from. The bladder empties into the urethra. But on either side of it are two little glands that collect fluid and then at, the, at orgasm contract and spurt out clear fluid. Now, it's not urine. It doesn't smell like urine. It is uh, more slippery than urine, but it can come out and and spew out uh, to a for a distance, it, or it can just come out very very um, just dribble out. But sometimes it can come out at a distance where it's it has it's some force scary. behind it. It's yeah, it's force force behind it, but it's scary for the patient because for the woman because she's she's like, wait a second, <laughs> did I lose urine? urine control and that's one of those big fears of all human beings is that they might lose urine control because especially in an intimate situation like that 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 would just be ick and they would gross out their partner Mm -hmm. so that's just one of those basic things that we're taught when we're two and potty trained you don't well yeah we're mortified because we have all those those cleanliness fetishes right and that doesn't feel clean and it's one of those things we were taught from to to say you must control this and you don't ever lose control of this and so there's a there's a, a shame and, and a fear and an anxiety and then those factors remain so the next time you have sex you're worried that that's going to happen again and that interferes with your ability to become absorbed in the process part of you remains apart trying to monitor and and be anxious or afraid a lot of women it takes are, all are, the fun out of sex <laughs> well for men, when they have those performance anxieties, it takes their ability to perform away. Right. Uh, for women, maybe it doesn't, but it certainly takes we away their ability. We can just grit our teeth and go on. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, we we have we have an ability to to not have a visual uh, a visual sign of mm-hmm. whether we are uh, turned on or or accepting for sex. So, in any case, when this particular orgasm and there's two, or excuse me, uh, ejaculation happens, it's more obvious. And it's more confusing because it's a lot like urinating, but it can't really be controlled in the same way as urination because in urination, you can, you can close that urethra, Mm -hmm. you can tighten it. So that's the first time. Even when you're having an orgasm, if there's a bladder pressure that you didn't take care of before you began to have sex, then you can shut that down or contain it until you finish. In in most, in most positions, but Mm -hmm. women who have urine loss, who have from babies, mm-hmm. it's always harder to shut that down. And in certain positions like standing up, it would be more difficult right. to shut that down. But lying on, on your back or, or forward um, on your hands and knees or something, missionary, they call it missionary position anyway, they, uh, that would be standing up and, and um, standing up's the worst. But, and sitting up is partially bad, but being in one of the uh, parallel positions to the floor mm-hmm. where gravity is not helping you decreases the risk of having urine loss. Okay. However, if this happens, this is a sign that you are having an excellent orgasm, mm-hmm. that you, you trust the person that you're with, especially if you're not embarrassed by it, mm-hmm. and that you understand that this is just part of a normal sexual experience. Well, that's one of the factors of not being embarrassed. If you understand that it, if, if you know, our conversation can help you normalize that, then it's the thing that you can uh, do some research on if you desire. But certainly you need to talk to your partner about it. You know, I've discovered that this is a thing that happens and it's normal and it's not urine and it's not dirty. Uh, and it's a sign that I'm receiving a maximal payoff, a maximal pleasure from right. our And that he's doing everything right. Yeah. So, so that's it. Could be a good thing, on both sides. So, that that's one thing. And then my question from people is: So, what is it? Okay. Well, well before you get into what is it, you yeah. were going to talk about the fact that there are two different yes. places where it originates. Right. And the you second, about I'm the sorry. First you're right. You're right. Okay. I got so excited about this. <laughs> 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 this is not something I get to talk about all the time right because it takes a lot of gumption for somebody to actually ask me the question well not not only us I mean, I mean we're professionals but one of the things that i talk to people about regularly is the importance of talking to your partner talk to your partner about what you feel what you experience what you want what you fantasize about as a couple develops that trust to take those risks then their intimacy uh coefficient goes up way high mm-hmm. and it makes everything better for everybody if you're safe and what that mean, does not mean is, I want you to do it this way. That takes it all. You know, <laughs> you I, start making those commands. I've heard, I've heard patients come in and go, well, I want them to do it. I'm like, okay, so that's not going to work. You have to talk about it, not demand it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That completely ruins the, the, the <laughs> whole atmosphere. Anyways, so the second type of ejaculation is not talked about so much because the other is so obvious when, when you have the spurting of, of this fluid – that's obvious. Well, the, the vaginal wall actually has fluid that is ejaculated in a different way than you would think. It, it's, all, it's not just sweating of the vaginal wall. It's an actual implosion of fluid that actually fills the vagina and then comes rolling out. And that is much more, that's much greater in volume and you can, I mean, you can feel it happen. It usually f- patients say that they get the, they kind of feel congested, like their pelvis is, is full of something, but, and then it releases and that releases into the vagina. So that fluid is slippery. It's, it's similar fluid, it, but it can be different consistencies, different colors, depending on uh, what you've eaten and depending on, um, the well, basically what you've eaten, what you've had to drink, and it com- it basically comes through the bloodstream, and the bloodstream, all of the uh, good serum in your bloodstream is then pushed into the vaginal wall and out the vagina. It, your body naturally makes vaginal lubrication. Uh, when you become sexually aroused, 
that facilitates your ability to have sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and this fluid is an enhancement of that or a maximization of that. It's actually much even more than that. Even more I mean, than that. vaginal lubrication is mo- almost like sweating. Which is this is which is a passive content. kind of mm-hmm. process that that is uh, hormone dependent, and it passively uh, places a lubricant that has some fats or wouldn't be if wouldn't be slick mm-hmm. in it and for for uh, sex. But the uh, Ejaculate's different. The ejaculate may, they aren't positive if it comes from the bloodstream or if it comes from the pelvic fluid because there's always fluid in your pelvis Mm -hmm. and it, and it is sitting right next to the vaginal wall. And they don't know if it comes from that. And of course I've operated so much when you feel pelvic fluid, Mm -hmm. it feels the same as ejaculate. It's a slime, slimy, slidey, um, lipid product that actually helps your bowels move around without getting stuck or mm-hmm. getting getting um, twisted. So so it's a similar fluid. So it's like your abdominal cavity has this fluid in it all the time. Yes. It has to have some. Not mm-hmm. not like a whole pool of it. Right. But you have it. It's in, in the base because you're sitting up, base of your mm-hmm. pelvis. And then the vagina and the uterus are are com- are attached or right next to that cavity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they're being bathed in this fluid. So, so sometimes when you have an orgasm, then the fluid, almost like an osmosis thing, just leaches through the wall of the vagina into that cavity. Right. and just okay. Or pushes through. Because mm-hmm. it's more of a push. It's not a, just osmosis pull, pulls it. You know, that's, it's not just, it's just a, two pressure areas and one pressure is higher and one's lower and the fluid goes. Uh-huh. It's more of a, it uses actual ATP, it uses energy right. to go from one side to the other. So it's pushing and for all of you scientists out there, it's pushing fluid out of the abdominal cavity and or the blood vessels mm-hmm. to get it into the vagina. And that's in the response to um, oxytocin, which is a hormone stimulated by testosterone. And it is stimulated by the uh, amino acid L-arginine and ornithine. Those two amino acids stimulate that. They may, and, there, and one of the other mechanisms is nitric uh, oxide. Nitric oxide is what Viagra, this is, this was the basis for women getting Viagra. Viagra would uh, swell the blood vessels, so cause congestion in the pelvis. And then because of that would help the fluid, not necessarily ejaculation, but for uh, lubrication in the vagina. So that's... But Viagra works and Cialis and all those Mm -hmm. brands of things. They work to pull fluid into the the bloodstream, bloodstream and dilate vessels in the lower abdomen and in the penis. Right. So that the penis is full of blood enough; it's engorged enough mm-hmm. that it can be erect, and therefore, right. so it's more about erection. But, but it's for, like pulling the fluid from one part of the body to another. Right. Dilating the blood vessels wherever your vessels dilate uh-huh. brings the brings the blood to that area. Okay. So it does do that. But it uses um, nitric oxide, NO, to do But that. is that the same kind of process then that you're talking about with the vaginal? Uh, well, that's part, part of the process. You have to dilate blood vessels to get blood what's there. The word, and if you're getting the transudation from the blood vessels into the vaginal wall and out, then the vessels have to be dilated. Mm-hmm. The molecular mechanisms, I'm not quite so sure. I mean... They're every, probably they, more information. They than we know need. the molecular, molecular, but I didn't really review those because I didn't think anybody would really want to hear about that. But it is, it is out there, mm-hmm. and it it is a process. It does use energy to make this happen. Yeah, it's not something that just is happens because you're breathing. It, so, it so needs is there a, energy to have this. Is happen. there a volume that's typical? Do you know? Well, in um. In the book on orgasm, mm-hmm. Beverly Whipple's book. Beverly's book says that the uh, fluid that comes out of the periurethral glands is a, a several tea, teaspoons full. Mm-hmm. Although I've had people report more than that, mm-hmm. and then other sources state that um, the fluid that comes out of the vagina with each with each orgasm uh, and each ejaculation can be up to half a cup. 
wow. or more of uh-huh. fluid. So it can be a real mess. So it's really noticeable. <laughs> Yeah. And if a woman doesn't know that that's okay, or if her partner doesn't know that that's okay mm-hmm. and normal, then they can be very concerned. Is something right. wrong? Right, something's going wrong. And is something, something broken? It, I get the, and they both can kind of feel the fluid coming out. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if he's penetrated, then he can feel the fluid surrounding him, and right. it's something that wasn't there a minute ago. Right. You know that. So that's got to be an unusual feeling. I, I have no idea. I'm female, so I don't get it. But I mean, but I'm trying to place myself in that in that world where that's got to feel like somebody turned a shower on. Mm-hmm. So, and then there's so much that it's not going to remain in the so, vagina. So, women then who have this ability, do they do it every time, all the time, most of the time, sometimes? Uh, from what from what I understand, from talking to people and people people who start doing this and are still feeling comfortable with it and comfortable with their uh, partner seem to do it a lot More. all the time, but mm-hmm. it's not the same all the time. Sometimes they're dehydrated and they don't have as much fluid. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're not as stimulated and they don't do it as much or they as often. And that's the same with orgasms. You know, somebody's multiply orgasm. Uh, Capable. That doesn't mean they always have multiple orgasms. Right. Sometimes one's enough. So but, it's, but you it's shouldn't, variable. You shouldn't score yourself on whether it happens or not. No, no. I mean, it's not something that is because he did it right. You're right. going to get this. I mean, okay. it's not that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's it's a matter of how you feel that day. Are you tired? Are you? Do you have enough fluid in your body? Do you? Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. have do you have enough? Do you have enough of the precursors of of oxytocin and nitric acid, which is uh, nitric oxide, which is the L-arginine and the ornithine. I mean, you've right. got to have that, and you've got to have good testosterone levels. So the stars have to be aligned. Well, it's not that bad. I mean, it's just that there's a lot of people that have this before they hit 40, and then all of a sudden when they hit 40, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. This isn't happening anymore. Right. So they know that it's normal for them, mm-hmm. but without testosterone... Without enough of the nutritional arginine ornithine, without um, estrogen plays a small part, but some estrogen. And we can always, if you can't take it throughout your body, you can take it just locally. Mm -hmm. But you have to have those hormones that are at good level, not just waning. You know, you have to have good levels of hormones for this actually to happen. So if you're used to it, I mean, first we start out with, oh, if you're afraid of it, now we're, if you're used to it and it stops, then those are the things you need to attend to. You need to attend to testosterone levels and nutrition and fluid and fluid dosing because you have to be hydrated and, and you'll be dehydrated when it's over. You need to, you know, redose yourself with water, but also with fats because it has fats in it, it has sugar in it, Mm -hmm. has glucose in it, um, and it, it has protein in it. So it has all the components of serum, like your serum is your blood without the red cells or out, without the white cells, just mm-hmm. just the, the slippery fluid that your, your blood's in. It has all the components of serum, but nobody studied it enough to decide exactly how, how much, and I'm not sure how you collect that. Yeah. That would just, because it dries up really fast. Yeah. It's a very... It's a it's something that's there and then gone. Yeah, it has to be one of these research labs that specializes in that. Yeah. Of course, well, we know they haven't done that yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, we haven't found that. So roughly to summarize, if you experience this, you should know that it is a normal thing that does regularly happen to a lot of women. Not every woman does it. Not every woman does it every time. If you've not ever done it and then it happens for you, hopefully our conversation will help you be aware of what's going on so that you aren't frightened and you aren't ashamed and you and your partner can talk about it and, and recognize mm-hmm. or acknowledge that that means you had your, your entire physicality was caught up in the process and it was a good experience for you. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of relaxation and, and trust. Yes. And that's what my patients have said. That's why it doesn't necessarily happen to women in their twenties. It sometimes happens as we get it's more a good sign older. Of the level of intimacy in the relationship. Right. Right. So so it's not something to shoot for, but it's something, I mean, it's But it's also not a failure if you don't do it. Failure. If your body doesn't do it, it doesn't do it. And that may be because your, you know, your uh, 
potty training taboos are <laughs> severe enough that you shut down all those other elements of or your, your body. religious taboos or your religious there's, taboos. There's a lot of things about. Yeah. I love. I mean, I'm I'm a Christian, and some of the ways that it what is said in the Bible have been mis used to make people feel like sex is terrible mm. is one of the things that keeps women from being able to be fully female and fully fully satisfied and it's sad because i don't i know god made sex for sex he made sex there so are that it would religious be and a wonderful thing cultural it's, restrictions and it's and you can't get past those i mean those take lots of counseling to get past that restriction that you feel because i've been told that God says sex is wrong. I mean, that happens oftentimes in marriages. And marriages don't get consummated because of that reason, or rarely consummated. Well, it's so not just it's a so, Christian it's concern. It's so sad. There's a group called the House of Muslims that practice uh, excision on their women. And they cut the okay. clitoris off. We can't. That, that I don't think I'll ever be able to talk about that because that's just the most horrible thing I can imagine. It's a mutilation. It would be like taking taking the penis off of someone. Yeah, it's How bad is that? Everybody thinks that's really, that would be the end-all, be-all of well, terrible. And it's done for the same reason, to limit their sexuality right. and, and ensure or more nearly ensure that nobody else is coming around, that they're not betraying their Well, they don't commitment. believe that they should please a woman either. Or it is all about should them. should be pleased. It should just be about, well, anyway, that, another conversation for Okay, so day. all I meant to say, and I am not speaking badly about my my religion. I'm just saying that it can be taken out of context and and in that way may harm people's ability to be fully sexual yes. with, in their marriages, which is a shame because it should be the one thing that binds you. A really healing, nurturing experience. And we we advocate that, and it is good for you. So we don't we don't want to. So have go you have think, great sex yeah. with, with your partner. Yeah. And if and if ejaculation occurs, don't be afraid of it. Understand it. Just it's get normal. It down. It's okay. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.